Now, a lot of players don't think that it's very easy to hit their fairway woods, especially when they're hitting them right off the turf. But what if I told you there's a few secrets that you can learn to make this really, really easy? Well, I've put together three of my all-time best videos that are going to share with you those secrets and help you to hit your fairway woods better than ever. Let's go ahead and get started. If you feel like it's almost impossible to hit a really solid three wood off the ground, you tend to maybe hit a little behind the ball, you thin it, you just can't get the club on the golf ball for some reason. Well, there's actually a couple secrets to this that I'm gonna go over in this video. Once you know the right way to do this, then it makes it really easy to hit that three wood. I got Q here, he's manning the flight scope, gonna read some of our numbers and talk about the differences between hitting it the right way and the wrong way. Let's go and get started. Now this is something that's incredibly common. What I see most of the time is when you have a three wood and it's on the ground, a lot of times you feel like I need to get it a little bit more up in the air or maybe I need to hit it harder. Either one of those thoughts makes it really easy to start flipping and losing a little bit of forward shaft lean and to actually ground out and be hitting kind of behind the golf ball. You know, another misconception in there, and you hear this all the time, is that we should sweep our fairway woods off the ground. Well, when you start thinking that, it's very easy, again, to hit too far behind the golf ball and two things are gonna happen. Either you brush a little bit of ground back here and then the, it, it kind of drop kick it. It's not really a solid hit. Or if you barely miss the ground, you hit it a little bit thin. There's really no way to get down into the golf ball and hit it solid. Well, in reality, you wanna hit down on it and have a negative angle attack. You actually wanna take a little bit of a divot when you're hitting a three wood. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this with a couple shots. This first one, I'm gonna feel like I pick the ball clean. I brush it or I sweep it off the ground. You'll notice just behind the golf ball, you may even see a couple blades of grass move back here behind the golf ball because I'm actually grounding out too far behind the golf ball. Let's give this a try. So that one, good swing. I swung hard, uh, made pretty solid contact as far as left and right on the face. It was on the middle of the face, but it felt really thin. It really just didn't pop off there. Now I'm swinging fast, so it's probably still gonna go pretty far when I do it that way. What were the numbers on that one, Q? So club head speed was about 105 miles per hour and uh, total distance was 276. Okay, so the, the carry distance is probably a little shorter. How far did that ball roll out? Uh, it was about 240 on the carry distance. So 240 in the air, that's usually the main number we're looking at. That's where you're gonna fly it if you're gonna carry it on the green. So 105 miles an hour swing speed, that's pretty fast swing speed. I should be able to carry the ball more than 240. Maybe you're currently swinging 80 miles an hour with a three wood, 90, 100, doesn't matter what it is. Using the same principle, it's gonna go farther. You might even swing a little bit faster doing it the right way. So let's try this again. Now what I'm gonna do is instead of feeling like I'm gonna sweep the ball, I feel like I'm actually gonna hit down on the golf ball. I wanna hit a little bit of a divot in front of this, this ball here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring the contact higher up on the face. If I'm sweeping with the ground, then I'm kind of off the ground here. I'm gonna be thin every single time. If I'm hitting down, I can get higher up on this club face. I'm gonna get higher ball speed and better contact. So let's go ahead and try this one out to where I feel like I take a little bit of a divot on this one. There we go, nice and solid, almost the exact same line. So I'm actually aiming, it's probably gonna show up to the right on the flight scope because I got my, my flight scope lined up down the corner. But I know that one fly, flew quite a bit farther. What was the number on that one, Q? So club head speed went up to 109 miles per hour and the carry went up to 260.5. So 20 yards farther in the air, it probably rolled out even, even more than that. What was, the, what was the total on that one? Total was uh, two, about 279. Okay, so I got a little bit more carry. I had better spin on that, better launch angle on that. Everything was a little bit better quality of shot. You'll notice right here that I have a little divot. I actually took out the grass in front of that golf ball on that last shot. If I would have swept that golf ball, it would have been thin. It would have been like the first one. So you're probably gonna pick up a solid 15 or 20 yards on your three wood by making sure that you hit that divot. Now, another big key to this is when we're trying to help our swing speed, we're trying to push with our hands and arms to really accelerate this club. A lot of people will have the misconception that they take this right palm and that pushes the club forward to help accelerate the club. That's actually not happening in a great golf swing. I want to have this right hand angled back and it's the turning of my body that actually gets this club to whip on through there. It's the pulling up that gets the club to really whip on through. So if I have a good angle of lag, so I imagine this club is lagging back here. 
and I take this grip and I pull straight up on it, watch what happens to the club head. It whips forward. It's that, that kind of whipping through contact that allows you to really get the heavy, uh, high club head speed. It's not pushing the club with the right hand this way. It's actually turning the body and letting it whip through. So this is also another thing that allows you to get higher swing speeds when you feel like you're hitting down. So what should be happening here is when I start my swing, everything is moving down. I have a lot of club head speed. If I was to let go of this club, it would just shoot straight down into the ground. All that momentum is heading down toward the turf. Then at the last second, or as I clear my body more, my hands are gonna work back up and in. So as my left hip, my left shoulder rotate open, watch my left hand, it pulls back up and in. And that changes that momentum to where now it whips through there. So again, I have to get that downward momentum. I have to feel like I'm gonna hit down into the ground. I'm not worried about taking a divot too big with a three wood, it rarely ever happens. The second piece of that is once I get that momentum, I get the intention of hitting down, then I clear the body out of the way. I wanna get my left side of my body just to turn through as much as I can. And that's how you get good contact and those really, really high club head speeds. So if I wanna kick it up a notch, maybe I wanna really hit one far with this three wood, I'm gonna make sure that I clear even harder with the left side of my body. And then I make sure that I hit, hit down, I have the intention of throwing the club down even harder. So let's go ahead and try this one. I'm gonna get a little faster club head speed and I'm gonna see if I can just get one almost 300 yards of this three wood. Let's give it a whirl. All right, Q. Wanted to get a little bit more divot on that one, to be honest, but it was still pretty solid. Probably not gonna be the 300 that I wanted. What were the numbers on that one? Uh, pretty close. You got up to 298 total distance and 113 on the club head speed. Yeah, so the club head speed was a lot faster. And again, all I felt like I did there is made sure that I had the intention of swinging down and clearing the left side of the body. That gets that whip that you're seeing on through there. Now, one last thing that's gonna also help with this. I have to make sure that I load up in the backswing. So many times when I see a player trying to get more club head speed, hit this good three wood, they're having this short swing, making it really compact to try to guide the ball. They're trying to place the ball on the club. If I'm gonna hit one really hard, I'm gonna really wind up. I wanna feel like my back turns to the target and then I really rotate all the way on through. So let's go ahead and try one more here where I really load up. Here, I'm gonna feel like my left shoulder gets completely behind the golf ball. That loads up my chest and allows me to get what I call a power turn. Let's go ahead and do another one here and see how this one goes when I focus on my backswing turn. There we go, killed that one. So that was a really nice solid hit. Again, had a little bit of a divot in front. What was the distance on that one, Q? So distance was uh, 307 yards and club head speed was 112 miles per hour. All right, so probably not gonna do much better than that. I can't guarantee that you're gonna hit a 300 yard three wood. What I can guarantee is that if you follow these, key, these principles, you're gonna be able to add 20, maybe even 30 yards to what you're currently hitting your three wood right now. The big piece of this is from the, the left shoulder turn and really loading up. If I don't load up, none of the other stuff is gonna work. I'm not gonna have the power when I clear out of the way. Again, that's what I call the power turn in the top speed golf system. Now, something me and Q have seen all the time is players topping their three woods and hitting their, sh their shots thin off the ground. And what happens is a lot of times we think, you know, this three wood needs to be in the front of our stance. So we set up to where it would be similar or more toward what a driver would be. And what happens is your club naturally wants to ground out behind this, more toward the middle of your stance where you would make contact with an iron. And the club starts coming back up as you're hitting this golf ball. So if I have my ball positioned too far forward, it's gonna be really easy to top the ball. So Q, let me hit a couple here. Yeah. And I want you to read the angle of attack on my flight scope and also, we'll also see the shot. Hopefully I don't top one in the water, but I probably will if I play it up in my stance here. So I'm gonna play this ball up in my stance like you've probably heard to do before with a wood. You know, I feel like I'm gonna lift it up in the air. A lot of times I'm barely gonna miss the ground and I'm gonna kind of thin it if I do this. Let's try it out. That was a pretty good top there. So what I <laughs> felt like, that was pretty awesome. I felt like as I'm making my normal swing that I would with a three wood, I naturally want to ground out back here. 
but my club is now working back up because it's too far up in my ball position. So I don't know if the flight scope's gonna read it. Did it read angle of attack? Or yeah, I didn't even pick it up, it was so bad. Didn't pick up anything. <laughs> so let's try one more and I'll do the same thing. Probably not as exaggerated here, but again, anytime I get this ball too far forward in my stance, the club wants to work up. What a lot of people don't realize is that the club hits down, even with a wood. A pitching wedge hits down on the golf ball, PGA Tour average hits down about five degrees down into the ground. So this club head, if it's a pitching wedge, is moving down into the ball at a negative five degree angle, like this. A three wood is moving down around negative two or three degrees. So it's still hitting down. The best players in the world are hitting down into the ball when they're hitting a three wood. And that's not very much of a difference. If you think of one minute on a clock, that's six degrees difference between one minute on a clock face. This is half of that. This is half a degree difference between a pitching wedge and a three wood. So when I put this ball way up in my stance, it's counterintuitive for what I'm actually wanting to do. I should be swinging the same with a pitching wedge and a three wood, where this has me swinging different, where I'm actually trying to lift the ball up in the air. Let's try one more time here and see if I can get a little more solid strike. Now, so there, even though I, I kind of hit it a little bit left, it wasn't the best shot, it was fairly clean, but it was on the bottom of the face. I was a hair from completely topping it again like I did that last one. Read any numbers on there? Yeah, you actually manage it up on that one a little bit, 0.8 okay. degrees. So my club is barely missing the ground back here and then I'm hitting up on the ball and that's why it felt so thin because my, my club is moving up into this golf ball and the bottom of my club is hitting the equator of the ball. It still ended up to be okay, but definitely not the margin for error that you wanna have. So the number one thing here we want to make sure that we're playing all of our clubs from a pitching wedge to a three wood, very similar ball position. So let me just grab a wedge here. I would normally play most of my wedges right around the center of my stance. So here's a sand wedge or gap wedge. I'm going to play it pretty much in the center of my stance if I'm playing a normal shot. If I want to knock it down or do something different, I may move it a little bit, but not very much. When I play my three wood, all I'm going to do is have that marginally, very marginally farther forward if I want to get a little bit more height on it. I could even play a three wood from the middle of the stance. That would ensure that I hit down on it just like I am my pitching wedge. But I like to play what feels comfortable to me is about like this, right? I don't want that way up here by my front foot. That should be, if the camera's lined up correctly, right about the middle of my stance or maybe one ball toward the front. And again, the reason for that is I want to be able to take the same swing with my pitching wedge all the way to my three wood, hit down on all those shots, and that way I make sure I make ball first contact, it's nice and solid, I don't thin it, and I don't chunk it. Now, you're probably asking about the driver. That is a little bit different. I do want to hit up on the driver. So I'm going to play that driver more toward my front foot so I can be hitting a positive angle of attack, just like we saw on that three wood that I miss hit. The reason it's good with the driver the ball's up in the air. I don't have to worry about thinning the ball because there's no ground in the way. I can tee the ball up, swing up on it, hit it just as good in the center of the face. Now, one of the other problems with this is, what if I'm not very consistent? So now I got my good ball position, I'm making my swing, but one time I chunk one and the next time I thin one, I just can't hit the same spot every time. You know, we've talked about this, Q. What's the, what's the number one thing you see if somebody's struggling with that, what would you recommend? One thing that I often see is that when you put that ball further up in your stance, it can kind of compound another issue, which is when we see that ball up in our stance, what we want to do is we want to kind of lean toward the target as we go up to the top. top. So that's, you see here, that's what Clay's doing. As he went up to the top here, he kind of get his spine angle leaning toward the target a little bit. And when you do that, what you're going to tend to want to do is you're going to tend to want to fall away in the downswing. So you see as he goes down, he falls away. And look where that club bottoms out at. Bottoms out behind the golf ball. And that's going to compound the issues of hitting behind the golf ball. So what we want to do is get that ball nice in a good place like Clay talked about, and then also make sure that we're standing, be, getting to our lead, our trail side, excuse me, in the backswing, get nice and loaded up. And then the downswing, that's when we get our good weight shift and get to our lead side so we can get that ball first contact. So you want to try and hit one and where we get that good ball placement and then also get nice and loaded up and get to our lead side. Yeah, absolutely. And like he's talking about there, you know, when that ball's way up, you know, I think I want to get to my left side, so I'm just compensating by starting left in the backswing and then you have to fall back. Because if you got left and you stayed left, you'd be swinging away, you'd just be chopping down and it wouldn't be any good. So your body knows that's not going to work. 
So let's go ahead and do it the right way here now. I'm gonna go ahead and play it toward the middle of my stance. Maybe just one ball up would be completely fine. And then from there, I'm gonna feel like I get a little tilt behind it like we talk about all the time in the top speed golf system. And then I can load up on my right side and shift to the left, swing down and through and be nice and powerful. Just like you're throwing a baseball, just like you're throwing a football, just like you're hitting about anything you do that's athletic. You load on the right side first and then you swing through to the left side. So good ball position. I'm gonna try to hit down. I should have a little tiny bit of a divot if I do this correctly. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, much better. Right down the middle of the fairway, higher on the face, you'll see there's a little tiny divot here. That's what you should have if you're hitting a three wood. Most people think you shouldn't have any divot when you hit three wood. Watch the best players in the world. Every single time they hit this club, there's a little tiny divot. It makes it so much more consistent. So what were our numbers there on flight scope? So hit the ball quite a bit fur further, went from 220 to 246.6. And then our angle of attack got a little bit down on the ball, got negative 3.6 down on the ball. And that's gonna allow you to get that good ball first contact. It's almost perfect. Just like we were talking about before, negative two, negative three is perfect for a three wood. And it's almost exactly the same as a wedge. The only difference between the three wood and the wedge, the wedge is sharper. That sharp leading edge cuts more of a divot. But this, if I was swinging a wedge and had that exact same swing, it would have a little bit more of a divot because that leading edge, but it feels the same. Whether I'm hitting any club in the bag, I just swing and it's gonna happen almost exactly the same when you're hitting off the ground. All right, so let's talk about once and for all, and I'll get to this stick here in a second, how to stop topping the woods. Now, I already know what you're doing if you're topping your woods. I bet you already know what you're doing. I bet all your playing partners know what you're doing. I bet you've been told this a thousand times. If you're topping, what's happening is you're standing up out of the shot, we're kind of losing our posture, and then we're falling back. The club's grounding out behind the golf ball, and that causes it to kind of kick up into the golf ball. You end up topping one, or you start chunking them, and it's just frustration after frustration. A really surefire tell to know if you're doing this and know if you're, you're able to hit good wood shots is you should be able to put the ball on a really, really tight lie and feel completely comfortable. Now, the part that hasn't been gone over is everybody knows we need to get our weight to the left, but the part that's missing there is when you get your weight to the left, if you don't do that properly, you're gonna end up getting steep in the downswing shifting your upper body too far forward and now, now you're hitting down into it, but it ends up in a really weak shot. It goes 30 or 40 yards shorter than it should. So it's not that you can't get your weight left. It's not that you can't stay down and hit down through it. It's just that when you do that, it ends up in a bad result. So now let's jump into exactly what to do properly. So this stick here is set up as a reference. And what should happen is if I set up properly, I'm gonna get into my posture and because my spine is tight, slightly tilted away, I wanna have that little small spine angle to dress. When I look down at this golf ball, this stick, even though it's directly over top of the golf ball, looks like it's in front of the golf ball. So basically my eyes are slightly behind the golf ball. Now, as I make my backswing, I wanna start out, the very first thing I wanna do in my backswing is even before I start moving the club, I wanna put some pressure on the inside of this right foot. Now that's really important. If you've been trying to hit down into it more, you've been trying to hit a divot with your woods, a lot of times what I'll see players do is immediately start to get that weight left, almost preset it to the left so they can hit down more. And when I do that, that stick now looks like it's directly over top of the golf ball. And that's a sure tell sign that if I set this up here, I'm not in a good position. Now all you're gonna do again is set this stick up directly over the golf ball, set it on the angle of your club, about 10 to 12 inches outside your golf ball is fine, just so it's out of the way, you're not gonna hit it or anything. And now that's a perfect reference point. If my stick alignment looks like it's over the golf ball or you really don't want it to be behind the golf ball, now my eyes are in front, I'm gonna be falling back every single time this way in the downswing. So I wanna set up, stick slightly in front of the ball in perspective to my eyes. As soon as I start making my backswing, my eyes are staying behind this golf ball. Now, here's the second part. Everybody knows that we need to shift to the left get our pressure going into our left leg. But what I don't wanna have happen is I don't want my eyes to go forward. Again, if I do that, now all of a sudden, this stick to my perspective looks like it's over top of the golf ball. And heck, if I get over here and this stick looks like my eyes are in front of it, the stick is behind the golf ball, I'm in big time trouble because I know this is gonna be kind of that steeper swing. I'm gonna be chopping down into it. So what I wanna do is get that weight shift early 
the eyes are behind the golf ball. And then as I do shift to the left to start my downswing, I still want to keep my upper body tilted back so that my eyes are behind this golf ball the entire time. Now that's a key, big time key, because that allows me to get this club from the inside in the slot and swing from the inside. So even though my weight is left, I'm swinging from the inside and I'm able to hit that nice power draw. Now pros are doing that. Every single pro have measured over 50 major winners. Every single one of them had their eyes tilted slightly back, their spine tilted slightly back. On average, they had about 20 degrees of tilt at impact. And that's really the only way that you can get your weight left and still come from the inside, come from the slot. So when I do this properly, I'm gonna set up, my eyes are slightly behind the golf ball. My weight shift very early. And then even when I shift my weight to the left and make my downswing, this stick always stays in front of the golf ball in relationship to my eyes. Or in other words, my eyes always stay behind the golf ball. Now when I do that, I can hit down as hard as I want to, and it's still gonna be a nice, powerful draw. There we go. That one was hit as good as I can possibly hit a shot. I brushed the turf there. And to be honest with you, I could have even hit the turf harder. That one was a nice tight draw, really good flight. Can't do any better than that. Now there's one more piece of this that's really gonna help you to get extremely powerful. Remember, when you're falling back, a lot of times what's happening is you're standing up out of the shot. So my hips are coming forward, my eyes are going back, and I'm falling back to the right. One thing that's really gonna help a ton with this is what I call the knuckle dragger. And I'm gonna feel like my hands actually get close to the ground. So now I can clear out of the way, my eyes stay behind the golf ball, and I can get tons of shaft lean and release this club out in front. You see, that's a, another misconception. Even with your woods, you're gonna have a lot of lag and the club, your hands are gonna be leading slightly in front of the club head at impact. The knuckle dragger is one of the easiest ways to do this. So if you feel like you're casting a little bit, you're standing up, losing your posture, this one drill is gonna solve all those issues for you. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that you see somewhere on the screen. You'll get instant access to that knuckle dragger drill or go down to the link below in the description if you don't see this card, that's completely fine. And I can't wait to show you the knuckle dragger drill. You're gonna absolutely love this one. Awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind, and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.